Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I hope you've already had your dose of caffeine, but don't worry if you haven't. You've come to the right place. You are going to absolutely get your dose of caffeine this morning. For those of you who are experiencing me for the first time, let me just introduce myself again. I'm Cheryl Wood. I am referred to as the Fearless Success Coach, and I'm going to share with you some of the reasons why I've been labeled the Fearless Success Coach. Uh, I am a mom. I'm a wife. I am, most importantly, a very passionate woman who believes in pursuing her dreams, who believes in nurturing her possibilities. And so for this next 30 minutes or so, I just want to take this opportunity to pour into you so that you understand that your possibilities have the opportunity to become realities if you're willing to nurture them. And so again, I say welcome to this summit. I want to thank my mentor and my friend, Dr. Willie Jolly for allowing me to be here, to have a voice to share with you today. And of course, my good friends, Shay and Trevor, for always creating such dynamic platforms for speakers like myself to be able to impact, inspire, and help to transform people around the world. Here's my motto for 2014, and maybe if you've been following me, you already know it, and that's great. For those of you who don't, the motto is this, play time is over. And that is the hashtag that I want you to go into the private, elusive, exclusive Facebook page and put out, and I want you to put it out into uh, on your Twitter feeds, hashtag play time is over. But I want you to take it a step farther. Behind play time is over, I want you to put these words. I will no longer press the mute button on my greatness. I will no longer press the mute button on my greatness. What I know is that now is the time for you to handle and address and embrace your greatness with urgency. Urgency. Not something that you can get around to when the perfect circumstances happen, that's when you'll do it. I mean right here, right now, today, I want you to commit to treating your dreams, your goals, your aspirations as though nothing else matters except for that. And I'm especially talking to all of my women out there who have put their dreams on a back burner. You know if, you're, if I'm talking to you. You are probably a woman who has a lot of responsibilities and obligations. Maybe you're a mom like I am and a wife and a business owner. But you have been putting your dreams on a back burner for so long that perhaps the vision of what you truly want to do in life, the vision of who you're truly destined to become has become a bit fuzzy. And so today is a part of this summit. This is the opportunity for you to reignite the passion for creating the reality that you desire. But you don't just desire it. It's creating the reality that you deserve. After all, you owe it to yourself to create a legacy. You owe it to yourself to unveil the manifestation of the greatest you. And I call that a masterpiece. And whether you believe it or not, whether you know it or not, whether you're waiting for someone else to validate it or give you permission, today is the time for you to stand in your power and to say, play time is over. I will walk in my greatness without apologies and without regrets. Now, this is something that's very passionate, I'm very passionate about and it resonates in my spirit and I'll tell you why. Because five years ago, I didn't walk in my greatness. Five years ago, I was not embracing my power to be something different, to do more, to be more. I wasn't embracing my possibilities as something that could actually become a reality. So if you rewinded on my life story five years ago, 
instead of being this speaker and author and coach, you would have found me as a very frustrated, discontent mother of three. In fact, I feel like I was existing in life. I wasn't living it. I was existing in it. Some of you know what I mean when I say that. Meaning I was simply running the routine of life. I was almost like a zombie. You know, I woke up in the morning. I got up at 4.30 or 5 o'clock. I tag team with my husband to get our kids ready so that we could get them off to before care. I went to a job that didn't nurture my spirit, didn't truly fulfill the person that I, I needed to be but hadn't uncovered yet. Rush back across town at the end of the workday to get the kids, always racing the clock, always screaming out internally for something more, for something greater, but not truly having the courage and the fearlessness to go after it, even in the spite, even in the face of the fact that it might fail, even in spite of the fact that I was this little black girl who grew up in the projects of Baltimore and didn't have a master's degree and didn't have a PhD. I had not yet developed the courage or the confidence to know that it was okay for me to pursue my gifts, to pursue my talents, and to walk in the power that I had, acknowledging everything that I did have instead of acknowledging and putting a bright light on all the things that I was lacking. And that kept me stuck in a place of want for entirely too long. I wanted a different reality. I wanted to be able to be more actively involved in my children's lives. I wanted to find something I was truly passionate about where every morning I would get to wake up and absolutely love what I was doing. I wanted to be able to create generational wealth that would long outlive me as a person that would extend to my children and their children and their children. Those were the things I wanted, but I stayed stuck. I remained hostage in a place of want because like so many of you perhaps watching this this morning, I was too afraid to take a risk, too afraid of what might happen. I was too comfortable with what I thought was safety and security. And for me, that safety and security was connected to a full-time job. Now, that's not to say that I absolutely hated my job. It wasn't the job that I hated. In fact, that job gave me so many skills to do what I'm doing today. But what I hated was the fact that I didn't have control of my own destiny. I didn't have control over my own wealth. I didn't have control over my own time. And that just wasn't good enough for me. Five years ago, as I decided, intentionally decided that I was going to do something different so that I could somehow experience different results, I decided to embark upon this thing called entrepreneurship. Now, let me tell you, I was clueless when I started out. I mean, absolutely clueless. I went to the library. I went to the bookstore. I bought every book that I could possibly buy to try to get a clue. Uh, and I didn't have anybody holding my hand. I just knew that I had to do something different. And I knew that if I took the leap of faith, if I jumped in with both feet, even not knowing all the answers, that somehow I would align with what was really my destiny. I would align with what was really my purpose. And that's what I did. I started a little t-shirt business five years ago. It was called Moms Are the Best. I connected it to something I was passionate about, which was motherhood. And I used this t-shirt line to inspire and to empower women and moms who have so many responsibilities, but oftentimes aren't celebrated, except one day a year. But here's the thing about jumping in with both feet and taking a risk and doing something even though there's no guaranteed results. Usually, that is the thing that propels you to where you really should be. Usually, that is the thing that will detour you and align you with what your real purpose and your real passion is. And that's exactly what happened. That t-shirt business simply was a, an initial platform for me to get to what was truly my destiny, which is speaking and empowering men and women all across the globe to take risks, to step outside of their comfort zone, to do something different, to be so committed to having and creating a different life that absolutely nothing will deter you. What happened? Well, a year and a half into that journey of vending, 
of sitting out in the sweltering heat with no tent because I was a rookie at the time and selling t-shirts and sitting out in parking lots and praying, praying, Lord, please let somebody buy a t-shirt so I don't have to go back home and tell my husband I didn't sell anything, that I came back home just as broke, busted, and disgusted as I was when I first left in the morning, and that I also spent six or eight hours away from him and the kids. I had to be okay with the failures that would eventually get me to where I was supposed to be. So a year and a half into doing that, I got a phone call one day from Morgan State University. And the person said, Cheryl Wood? I said, yes. They said, hey, this is, this is the rep from Morgan State University. We've been hearing about you. And we hear that you're this mom who started a t-shirt business even while you're still working a full-time job. And we want you to come to our annual women's conference. And we want you to teach other moms and women how to start their own business. <sighs> wow. I said, are you sure you spelled the name correctly? <laughs> it's Cheryl Wood. There's no S on the end of that. You sure you have the right person? Because I thought I was being punked. I did not think there was any way possible that they were contacting me, who at the time I still thought I was a rookie. I was still a rookie. I didn't expect anyone to contact me about my expertise in teaching other women and moms how to get started how to overcome all the negative self-chatter, all the fears, all the doubts that you have, all the, the non-guarantees, but to do it anyway. And after I did that event, after I spoke at that event, I knew that I had not wasted any time. I knew that that year and a half that I had sold t-shirts in the sweltering sun in parking lots, I knew that all the time that I dragged boxes of t-shirts to my car and unpacked it and set it out on a table and didn't buy it, sell anything, and then had to pack it back up and drag it back to the car. I knew that none of that was in vain because it was simply a test to see if I was willing to give more power to my faith than my fears about failing. Are you ready? Are you willing to give more power to your faith than your fear? so that you can begin nurturing the thing that's deep inside of you that you know is screaming out to be let go, to be released, so that you can walk in your greatness. Now is your time. Playtime is over. And I want to give you just three ways that will help you to get to that place of being willing to walk in that greatness, of being willing to embrace your power and being able to use your voice, your talents, your gifts, your skills, your experiences to change the world. Just like Dr. Willie Jolly is changing the world. Just like Shay and Trevor are changing the world. So here's number one. I hope you have a pen and a notepad so you can jot these down really quickly. Number one is to commit to the decision with tenacity. When you commit to the decision, that means you're taking action. See, some of us, sometimes we think about it, we wish for it, we hope for it, we daydream about it, we even lose sleep over it. Some of us are on our hands and our knees and we're praying for that breakthrough in our lives, but we're not committing to it with tenacity because we're not taking action. Action is the only prescription for fear, for self-doubt, for worry, for wonder. Action. What are you doing that's moving you closer to the thing that you say is your destiny, to the thing that you believe you're meant to do, the reason that you believe you're put here on this earth? See, when I say commit, I mean, yes, you're willing to sit in the sweltering sun and sell those t-shirts. I mean, you're willing to get out and go to that networking event even when you're exhausted because you've worked all day and you really just want to go home and take a shower and kick up your feet. When I say commit, I mean you are willing to keep knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking until someone says yes. That's tenacity. Tenacity is a sheer stubbornness for getting what you want, for staying in the race. Look, I've never ever watched a, a race 
and seen a runner throw up their hands midway and say, you know, I'm just tired. I'm over it. Count me out. I've never ever seen that. But what I have seen is a runner who has reached the complete space of exhaustion, but who will develop just enough energy to crawl their way to the finish line just to say they finished the race. Are you willing to commit to your goal, your big dream, your aspiration with that type of tenacity, with that type of stubbornness and willpower and persistence and perseverance? Playtime is over. We don't have time for excuses. We don't have time to live in our past stories that have held us hostage for so long. We no longer have time to allow ourselves to continue to be the victim of all the things that went wrong in the past. Now is the time to stand on your feet and be the victor and to crawl your way to the finish line if that's what it takes. You've got to commit when no one else is willing to support you. When everybody else is looking at you and saying, you're crazy because you want to leave your job and pursue this business. You're crazy if you want to get away from all those toxic friends. They've been your friends for years. Why would you try to get away from them now? You're crazy if you decide at 50 or 60 to go back to school to further your education so that you can get to that next level in your career. See, you've got to be willing to endure those thoughts from other people that yes you're crazy you have lost your mind you're a little over the top that's what people who are truly committed to their goals and aspirations and dreams do committing to the decision with tenacity means you keep going even when it's easier to stop even when you look at everything that's in front of you and you say my god why am I doing this and then you remember because you owe it to yourself to live a life that's filled with excitement and energy and passion and enthusiasm. You deserve, you owe it to yourself to wake up every morning excited about what you do. See, five years ago, that wasn't the life I lived. I told you it was in existence. And I dreaded going to the office every day. I dreaded it. But now, now that I've taken risks, that I've completely stepped outside of my comfort zone, now that I've fallen flat on my face over and over and over again, now that I've looked my naysayers straight in the eye and said, I'm going to do it anyway, now I get to live the thing that was just a possibility five years ago. And I get to wake up every single morning with enthusiasm and excitement and an energy in my spirit that cannot be contained. It's an energy that wakes me up first thing in the morning, even though I don't have to leave the house at 5 o'clock. I'm up at 5 o'clock, ready for what the day is going to bring to me. It's the thing that keeps me awake at night, that keeps me up until 3 in the morning creating content to share with my customers. It's the thing that keeps tapping me on my shoulders, even when I have challenges, even when I have setbacks, and reminds me, Cheryl, you owe it to yourself. Do you have that type of commitment? Are you willing to have that type of tenacity to pursue what you believe you've been put on this earth to do? Well, I know you can develop that commitment, and that's the beauty of it. Even if you haven't developed it yet, you can use this summit as the thing that catapults you to absolutely develop the commitment, the stubbornness, the determination. Here's number two. I want you to kick fear in the gut. That's right, I said it. I'm not usually, I'm not a violent person. <laughs> but I want you to kick fear in the gut. <laughs> and when I say kick fear in the gut, I mean everything that's in the back of your mind that you're afraid of. People's rejection or people telling you no or people's judgment of you, people's criticism. Maybe it's your own, uh, your own inability to see yourself as being great, as being amazing. Maybe it's the fear of failure. Maybe it's actually the fear of success because you think people are going to look at you and say you changed. Whatever the fears are, you've got to look it straight in the eye and do it anyway. 
everything that I've done in my business, everything over the past five years, generally speaking, when it's something big, it has scared me to death. Absolutely scared me to death. But once I do it, oftentimes I realize that what I was so fearful of is not quite as great as I thought it was. I kept myself hostage because I allowed the perception of what it would feel like, what it would be like, what it would look like to keep me held hostage. Just last year, just in August, I decided to take a big leap. You know, one of my big goals has been to, to be in a stadium and, and to be able to share my message of empowerment and fearless living and this whole motto of eliminating excuses and playtime is over, to be able to share that message with masses of people at one time, preferably in a stadium setting. And so I joke and I say, well, you know, folks like Les Brown and Tony Robbins hadn't called me yet, so I had to take matters into my own hands and I had to go out and rent my own stadium. See, that is kicking fear in the gut. Because when I rented that stadium and I took my husband with me, he looked at the contract and I looked at the contract. He looked at the con and he looked at me and he was like, mm. he looked at those numbers and he said, are you sure? And I said, no, <laughs> I'm not sure. I was so nervous. I was so afraid. Everything in the back of my mind was saying, Cheryl, why are you doing this? Why are you taking this financial risk? Why are you taking this risk that people are actually going to come to this event when you, you're not a Hollywood name? You're not this big person on the, on the market. Why are you taking this risk? And I said to him, if not now, then when? Even if I waited six months from then, even if I waited... 12 months from then, I would still most likely be just as afraid as I was in that moment. So I had to ask myself the difficult question, why not now? Why not me? And that's what I want you to ask yourself. Why not now? Why not me? If anybody's going to succeed, why can't it be you? If anyone's going to achieve their big dream, if anyone's going to walk in their greatness and make an impact on the world, if anyone's going to create a legacy, if anyone's going to build generational wealth, why not you? And why not now? Don't play the win-then game. When this happens, then I will. Your time is now, but you've got to believe it. You've got to embrace it. You've got to claim it. See, I claimed that I would be a well-known name in the, the arena of motivational speaking before it ever happened. I visualized it and spoke about it as though I was already living it. And I started to walk in the shoes that I wanted to fill before I ever filled them. That is kicking fear in the gut. And every day I wake up with this amazing energy and I say, now what scares me the most today? but that's going to get me closer to my dream. And whatever that thing is, whether it's picking up the phone and making a phone call or asking someone for support or going out and, and prospecting for customers, whatever that thing is that brings me the most amount of fear, I kick fear in the gut and I go for it. And most times, 99% of the time, I do not regret it. That 1% of the time, I might regret it because I don't get the answer I want. But that's okay too because that builds character. And that builds strength and that builds determination in me internally to know that I can keep going even when I do hear the word no. And last but not least, number three, create non-negotiable boundaries to achieve your dream. When I say create non-negotiable boundaries, I mean time boundaries as well as boundaries as it relates to your level of focus, boundaries in your mental space, your mental capacity. So of course, your time is your most valuable asset and you absolutely have to create boundaries around that. And you've got to say, okay, yes, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm this, I'm that, but my big dream is to do this over here. And so every day or three times a week, I'm going to set aside these hours strictly to pursue my dream, whether that means finally writing my book or whether that means creating content for my business or whether that means going out and nurturing relationships, whatever the thing is, create those time boundaries and hold yourself to it. Hold yourself accountable. Don't allow yourself to get away with taking the easy way out and creating excuses. What did we say? Playtime is over. But also you've got to create boundaries in your mental space, meaning when you do set those time boundaries and say, I'm going to do this, 
and this is going to move me closer to my dream. When you make that commitment for time, also make the commitment for your mental space, meaning you're not going to allow anything else to come in and distract you. You are going to laser focus on those things, those tasks, and those assignments that propel you forward, that move you closer to your big dream. So there you have it. Commit to the decision with tenacity, kick fear in the gut, and create non-negotiable boundaries. And I'll tell you this, maybe you're tired. Maybe you're just exhausted from thinking about what you want, from getting on your knees and praying about it, for wishing for it, for hoping for it, for writing things in your journal about it, and you're not getting the results that you want. And maybe in your mind you've created all of these reasons why it's not going to happen for you. But I urge you, I absolutely implore you, to reignite that spark, to reignite the flame that, yes, your possibilities can develop and evolve into probabilities, and those probabilities can then become realities. I am living proof that if you don't stop, if you persist, if you're consistent, if you believe in being repetitious, if you believe in knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking, even when people tell you no, if you believe in knocking again and knocking again until you get the yes that you want, you will live the life that you deserve and desire. Every morning, start your morning off telling yourself, play time is over. I will no longer push the mute button on my greatness, on my dreams. And this is what I do. See these here? These are my winner medals. <laughs> I treat myself like a winner every single day. I put these medals around my neck as though I just ran the Olympics, a marathon, and they just gave me these medals that say winner. And I treat myself like a winner. I talk to myself like a winner. I think like a winner. I act like a winner. I read materials that help to make me a winner. I listen to audios and podcasts and downloads and CDs that help to make me a winner. And most importantly, I surround myself with other winners who will not allow me to diminish my life, who will not allow me to say comfort is okay because I know that comfort simply breeds mediocrity and that comfort and greatness do not live on the same street. Now is your time. Playtime is over. Hashtag it out there on Twitter, in the private Facebook page, elusive, exclusive Facebook page. Playtime is over. I will no longer push the mute button on my greatness. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Go out there and get your blessings. I'm Cheryl Wood, your fearless success coach.